So last Saturday, Nova Scotia got hammered by a hurricane. Trois Corby's Hollow, though, is sheltered under the lee of the mountain, and we didn't get hit too hard by it. We, like most of the province, though, did lose primary power, but we have backup systems. So after getting the backup power going, I decided to head out into the woods because the hurricane also brought between 100 and 150 millimeters of rain, as well as cold air in its wake. And rain and cold air mean mushrooms. And were there ever mushrooms? I didn't have time to shoot this video properly. There were so many mushrooms, it was literally a rush to harvest them before the insects got to them. So I just filmed and recorded mostly with a point and shoot. In a few places where I only had time to shoot, I recorded audio from home in my studio, which you're hearing right now. So you might hear some odd transitions in the quality of the voice recordings. In any event, enjoy the video. It was a heck of a mushroom hunt. It would appear that mushrooms like hurricanes. I'm actually not too terribly surprised to see this amazing fruiting going on the day after Hurricane Dorian came through Nova Scotia and brought about 100 millimeters of rain here to the mountain. And when I woke up this morning, the temperature was sitting right around 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is around three or four degrees Celsius. There's one mushroom. There's another mushroom. Just over there beyond those trees, there's two more enormous, fresh, beautiful lexanums and boletes everywhere. I had originally come out here with my higher resolution camera because I was intending to photo document the woods after a storm. But moments after getting here, I realized I was going to be foraging this whole afternoon. So I brought the camera back to the cottage and I'm just carrying my my little highly advanced point and shoot. It's a very sophisticated point and shoot and quite useful, but I'm going to be doing a lot of foraging today and not much filming. Every other step I'm coming across lexinums. I've gathered a dozen more in a dozen steps. I just found this one. And right over there, there's another one. And there's about eight or nine or ten of them just over there. It's an amazing flush. The flush I've been waiting for all summer that I thought was going to bypass us is finally here. This morning when I woke up, there were the most... Oh, wow. Right there. There's two more. They're just emerging. They'll be full size tomorrow morning. But this morning when I woke up, I saw the largest chanterelles I've ever come across growing in the spruces just outside my cottage. Just three or four meters from the cottage. It's an amazing flush. They're even coming up out of logs right there. And here is a fresh lobster I've just come across. Everywhere I turn, every other step, there are fungi in this forest. Edible, wonderful fungi. Not too far from the fresh lobster, I've come across a Rusula brevipes that is halfway into being transformed into a lobster mushroom by the parasitic fungus Hypomyces lactofluorum. I've never before been able to catch the transformation in process. And this is quite fascinating. I thought there were just two lexinums here to harvest, but up closer I can see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then there's more just around that tree. There's at least a dozen, maybe fifteen. There's another one. And I've only moved maybe twenty feet or six, seven meters from where my bag was. In fact, they're so thick in the woods. I take a few steps and then I set down the bag and then just cover the ground for a dozen meters all around the area and then move on and set down the bag. I'm using the bag as a marker so that I just don't keep following a current path of mushrooms and overlook some. I'm not worried about leaving fungi behind to leave spores because more, there's little ones in the ground coming up and I just won't harvest here tomorrow and that'll create plenty of spores to reinvigorate them in this area. Oh, and there's another one right over there between the two standing trees past my dog. You can see it right in the center of the camera. This is way, way past my expectations. I think that this here is now the heaviest flush I have ever seen. It was a very poor mushroom harvest all this summer, and it seems that they were just waiting for one good rain and a cool night. After the enormous rains, many of the fungi, such as this lexinum, are just enormous. Here we have a number of fresh horsehoof fungi. There 
I think I'll take two or three home just to do something with the amadou. I came upon a little break in the wood where there were large high bush cranberries growing. Naturally, I had to stop and gather enough to make cranberry sauce for all the holidays between now and the year 2030. Right behind those horse hoof fungi, more bullets there and there. There's another bullet and one just to the left of it. It never ceases to amaze me how clever fungi are at concealing themselves. With a flush this insane, and I'm already turning up lobster mushrooms, lexinums and bolites, and even a few suilas here and there, and chanarelles first thing this morning, everything is coming up all at once. I think I'm going to spend an hour or two in this forest. I've half filled my 20 liter bag already. And when it's full, I'm going to head down to the hemlock forest where I'm more apt to find lobster mushrooms and suspect there might even be the wonderful matsutake, which exists here only in legend and in the notes of certain mycologists of yesteryear. But I've smelled them. I've smelled the dirty socks and anise walking through that forest, which makes me certain that I have stepped on their mycelia while walking through those woods. They just were not fruiting at the time. Maybe we'll get lucky today. I was just walking away from where I saw the lactarius turning into a lobster. Got about four meters away, happened to glance back, and saw a beautiful edible lexinum right there. And another one right beside it, right there. Each one well hidden. I could honestly believe fungi have a certain sentience. They know how to conceal themselves. They always seem to find a way to keep themselves hidden. Walking over here to harvest them, I found two more concealed just there. Here is a young and perfect bolete, which is growing beside a couple of older bolets, which unfortunately are too old to be made use of now. And this is the dreaded Rusula Amedica. Avoid this one unless you want to spend a few days vomiting. Here are three fungal species that I see often and I keep meaning to take the time to identify them. But with a major flush going on right now, and the rush to gather all these fungi before they spoil, I won't be taking time to identify them just this moment. Sphagnum moss can be a very poor yielder. On the other hand, it's just the kind of place where you might find chanarelles, or better yet, lobster mushrooms. Here we have a nice flush of the fungus commonly known as angel wings, more aptly known as the Pleurocybella porogens. This fungus has gained what is, in my opinion, a poorly deserved reputation because almost 20 years ago, 17 persons in Japan died supposedly from eating it, though all of those persons were elderly, had kidney conditions, and had glutted on these fungi. Outside of Asia, nobody has ever died from eating angel wing fungi. In fact, more people die each and every year simply from eating lettuce and consuming dairy. The North American Mycology Association considers this fungus to be quite safe in moderation, and so do I, and I think I'll enjoy these tonight. Our mushroom hunting has yielded another little benefit. Some nice mint. We're going to be busy processing the goods from this find today. We're going to be eating very well from this for days to come. Here's a lovely and unusually late flush of very large chanarelles. It just seems that anything and everything that can come up is coming up following the hurricane. On the way to the hemlock forest where the lobsters commonly grow, there are so many perfect blackberries after the heavy rain from the hurricane. I think I'm just going to stop and have a few, even though it's late in the day. This is the fairy club, an edible but unusual mushroom, rare in these parts, so I don't harvest it too heavily. It's nearly dark now and I'm about done with foraging, and while hiking out of the old hemlock forest, I came across these ghost pipes. I was surprised to see that their blossoms are erect. They usually hang down. This is because the blossoms of the ghost pipes are developing their fruit. As the fruit develops, the blossoms stand up. It's very late in the season for ghost pipes. Good to see them though. They're always beautiful. Well. Half the province or more might be enduring a blackout tonight after Hurricane Dorian. 
But here at our little backwoods cottage, we will definitely be eating good in the wildwood. <laughs>